Today, I'm talking to Dr. Tim Chacker, who's a professor of medicine at University of Minnesota. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us, Tim. My pleasure. So you are an AMFAR grantee. You are a peer reviewer for us. You've joined us at think tanks. And so it was a surprise, a pleasant surprise, uh, when I saw you on the NBC Nightly News just a few nights ago. And uh, the story was about you conducting a trial of hydroxychloroquine for COVID out there in Minnesota. Can you tell us something about that trial? Sure. Um, so we actually have multiple clinical trials going right now. Uh, hydroxychloroquine is just one of them. But the uh, uh, principal investigator for that study is looking at two different questions. The first question is, if you give hydroxychloroquine to someone who's been exposed to uh, the virus, so they live in a house with somebody who tested positive, and you give hydroxychloroquine, can you prevent them from getting infected? And that's post-exposure prophylaxis. It's exactly what we learned in the HIV world, and that's the model that, that we're using. And hydroxychloroquine is the drug that they're using for that. The second drug, uh, the second trial using hydroxychloroquine is for people who test positive uh, and they want to identify these folks early in the uh, course of the infection and find out if they give them hydroxychloroquine, can they prevent them from getting uh, significantly more ill? Uh, and that, uh, that study is also up and running and enrolling. Uh, and this is, these studies are totally done over the internet. So if you go to the, our COVID-19 website, you can sign on, to, sign up to uh, uh, get information about the study. Uh, someone will contact you and should you qualify, the FedEx guy shows up with the bottle of hydroxychloroquine versus placebo and um, you do all your follow-up uh, via the internet as well. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, as I was mentioning before, we know you, you're a member of the AMFAR family. We know you as an HIV researcher, and um, certainly you're, you're working along with a lot of other people who used to be HIV researchers on COVID right now. I think we're seeing at AMFAR, we're hearing a lot of these stories of an intersection between HIV and COVID, which may be due to, you know, expertise in working with viruses or experience in dealing with a pandemic. Um, what are your thoughts on this intersection between HIV and COVID? Well, like a couple of things. Um, you know, in, in many ways, HIV prepared us <clears throat> for this. You know, uh, HIV, that's where we learned how to do uh, clinical trials rapidly. That's where we learned how to get drugs through the FDA rapidly. Um, in the basic sciences, you know, for example, in the work that I do, uh, we are already um, examining tissues, trying to understand the pathogenesis of the disease, just like we did, Ashley Haas and I and others have done uh, in the world of HIV. So we've just basically taken that toolbox and we've shifted it over and applied it to um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. Um, so, you know, in many ways, HIV prepared us for uh, a rapid response at every level um, for this. But the other thing that's a little, uh, that's worth talking about, um, you know, this is not uh, a typical flu where we're going to deal with it for a couple months and then it's going to go away. Uh, we all anticipate that, you know, yes, there'll be this surge in this wave. Uh, and then if, if we have flattened the curve, as they say, um, we're going to be at this for a while. And so a lot of people have shifted their attention to COVID. I can guarantee there's going to be a lot of money from the NIH thrown at this, um, uh, which is the appropriate thing to do and, and all of that. And, um, but we have not, we can't lose sight of the fact that we live in a world with 35 million people who are infected with HIV and will continue to be infected with HIV. And we haven't quite solved that problem yet. And so I, I worried as this pandemic goes on, and it will, and we're gonna be working on this for some time, um, what, what happens to HIV? You know, we haven't cured it. Uh, we've made some inroads, we've made some progress, um, uh, and some really exciting things are happening, but at the moment we are all pivoting. Yeah, I mean, you make a great point there because, I mean, we really do need to keep our eyes on the HIV epidemic, the pandemic, all the people around the world living with HIV and how much research is also needed um, to solve, you know, the ongoing issues that are happening in the HIV epidemic. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But, you know, that reminds me that, you know, in your day job, in, in your normal life, so-called normal life, um, 
you're a person who treats people living with HIV. So how are the people in your clinic who, who are living with HIV, how are they doing? Have you heard any stories? Are they having difficulty or anything with, with treating people living with HIV? So, so I, I have not seen any of my patients uh, with COVID. I, to my knowledge, none of them have been infected with COVID. <clears throat> um, what I'm seeing mostly is anxiety. Uh, and um, uh, as I mean, you folks in New York know this better than anyone. Um, uh, there are some people that just simply don't get the message. And my, my patients get the message. They're, they're anxious, they're um, scared. Um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're writing prescriptions in a, at a higher frequency for anxiety related symptoms and for sleeping and that sort of thing. Um, but what I'm hearing is that employers aren't taking them seriously uh, and they're very concerned because, you know, they're having to be crowded into conference rooms and yet they don't have a normal immune system and they don't want to disclose why they don't have a normal immune system. And that creates a lot of even more anxiety. Uh, and so those are the kinds of challenges that they have right now. And, and um, uh, our clinic is, is, you know, we're really spending a lot of time uh, helping people through those um, uh, those challenges. Boy, there are a lot of complexities around this uh, COVID-2 uh, pandemic that um, just have such a ripple effect out of, on, along so much of what we do. We could all do uh, with a lot of clarity and certainty in this uncertain time. So uh, thank you very much for spending time and, and uh, sharing your insights with us. Uh, wish you all the best with your work and stay safe. Same to you. Thank you. I enjoyed it.